Welcome to the Sustainable Solutions for Craft Beverage Producers webinar series hosted by EPA Region 1 and the EPA Energy Star Program and the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services Pollution Prevention Program. I'm Rob Gilman, the Pollution Prevention Coordinator for EPA Region 1. I support sustainability projects throughout New England, particularly those that help food and beverage manufacturers save money and work smarter by eliminating waste and reducing the use of energy, water, and toxic materials. I'm joined by co-hosts Kathy Black and Cynthia Nelson of the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services Pollution Prevention Program, and Emily Bulger of EPA's Energy Star Program. And I welcome today's host. Emily will handle questions, and Kathy is behind the scenes, making sure the webinar runs smoothly. We also have George Burgos from EPA available for technical assistance. The sustainable for Craft Beverage Producers webinar is made possible with funding from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Next slide. So let's start off with some housekeeping items for all. Uh, everyone should know that all the attendees should know that there are muted. And if you're experiencing technical problems or want to ask a question, please use the question tab on the side dock where it says enter a question for staff please type your question and specify which speaker, if applicable. That's if you want to ask a question to the speakers. And if you are having audio trouble, please close all applications and log out your, of your VPN. Yeah. And if you're still having trouble, please select the phone call button under the audio tab and call the number listed in the registration confirmation email with the pin. This webinar is being recorded and a link to the recording will be sent to all registered attendees and posted on the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services Sustainable Craft Beverage Program webpage. Next slide. One last message I need to share with you is that this webinar is for informational purposes only. Any mention of trade names or products does not imply the endorsement by EPA or the New Hampshire DES. And we're not responsible for the ideas or opinions of presenters today, but we do hope that you find it highly educational and informational as well. So let's uh, get things moving with our poll. We have two polls to kick things off with. And so our first poll is to learn a little about how many people are joining us today. And so it just asks, if you're the only one attending, just hit just me. If there are two people who are attending with you, sitting by your side, if you have three people, click that. If you have four people, you can click that. And that just helps us understand how many people are joining the webinar today. So. We'll give you just another second to do that, and then we'll see what the results are. All right, please show us the results. How many people do we have uh, in terms of the number of attendees per viewership? So, all right, we've got a lot of single passengers today, which is uh, which is fine. So that helps us know uh, how many people are on. So our next poll is really designed more to understand what organizations you represent. So in this poll, we want to know what, what is your place of employment? Is it a brewery or related trade association, a winery, distillery, or other craft beverage uh, enterprise? Are you from government? Are you worth a university? Or are you working with a nonprofit? All right, let's uh, let people select their choices. And I think, Kathy, we're ready to see what we have in terms of our spread here. And uh, so, you know, this is a really heartening to know that over half of the people who are on the call today are from trade associations, but we have some folks from government, uh, oh, actually in winery distilleries as well, um, 4%. Uh, government's about a, a quarter, universities come in just under 10%, and we have about 10% of nonprofits. So this is a really nice spread of individuals to, to have uh, with us today. All right, well, let's, let's get into our speakers for today. We have two fantastic speakers who will talk about carbon dioxide capture with, with the small enterprise breweries and uh, miners and distilleries. Um, first, we're gonna be hearing from Alan Brinton. He's the founder of Graysell Brewing of Rhode Island. Alan has a BS in chemical engineering and he's been uh, working in his career for over 25 years in the pharmaceutical, with the pharmaceutical industry. And while working full time, he founded Graysell Brewing in 2011. And in 2017, he joined the brewery full time, and he currently runs the day-to-day -day operations of the brewery. 
Then we will hear from Amy George, the founder and CEO of Earthly Labs. For the past 20 years, Amy has been an entrepreneurial, envir environmental entrepreneur, working in areas ranging from artificial intelligence and reusable consumer products. Amy has been recognized by Forbes and Fast Company magazines, and she holds an MBA with a focus in entrepreneurship and environmental management from the University of Texas. Amy will start us off. So with that, Amy, uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, we're glad, so glad you're here. Yeah, it's an honor to be here today. We, Rob, with the um, attendees assembled here, um, to give a little background, um, Earthly Labs was founded in 2016 with a vision to make um, carbon capture affordable for small businesses and someday potentially even homeowners. Uh, we have a vision to reduce CO2 emissions by a billion metric tons as fast as possible. Um, this would not be possible without the support of our customers and thought leaders in industry like Graysale Brewing. So I'm thrilled to introduce you to Alan and allow him to share his story. If we look at the next slide, I'll hit on some of the topics that Alan's gonna cover, and then I will sort of close it out with um, other applications for those of you on in the winery space or interested in ways you can support our vision of keeping greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere. Um, we provide a bigger perspective. So Alan's gonna give you background on um, he and his wife's amazing brewery, uh, hopefully sharing more reasons why you need to put them on your list as a destination. Um, what the market drivers were for them when they considered carbon capture technology um, as a small business, it's still a novel concept. And so we're thrilled, of course, to be featured here um, by the EPA and the PPP program. Um, he's gonna give a little bit of background on the installation project um, and, and overall process and experience for him. You know, carbon capture is something that um, many believe is a reserve for folks that have millions of dollars and requires a chemical plant size um, installation and that is not the case um, with what we've developed so Alan's going to hit on that um, as well as what does it mean for his team to introduce this technology and some of the business benefits and with that I will turn it over to Alan. All right Amy thank you uh, very much for the introduction and Rob, Kathy, Emily, Cynthia thank you so much for the uh, opportunity to uh, be here today to uh, talk about this, this awesome uh, new technology that's available to craft breweries. Um, if we want to switch to the next slide, I'll, I'll start going through my presentation. Uh, just real quick, a little bit about Graysale. We are a seaside brewery located in Westerly, Rhode Island. Uh, the brewery was founded by my wife and I in 2011. At the time we were, I think our first year we brewed about 500 barrels and since then we've grown to uh, knocking on the door of a 10,000 barrel brewery. Um, the beer that really put us on the map is uh, Captain's Daughter. It's a double, double IPA that we launched in 2014 and since we did that uh, it's kind of been a wild ride for us but one that we have very much enjoyed. Uh, most of our beers kind of nautical themed. Um, you can kind of see the, the cans uh, down pictures, a lot, a lot of boats, a lot of ships uh, that, that we have and other nautical references. And we're currently distributed in Rhode Island's our main market, but you can also find us in Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, and uh, one additional one since this slide was put together, I'm very proud to announce that we are currently available in New Hampshire as of a week ago. So we are uh, totally excited to be uh, to be up in New Hampshire. So you can look for us there as well. Uh, so you can head to the next slide. So, you know, CO2, it's, it's kind of a unique um, material in the brewing industry. It is uh, you know, really a byproduct of our manufacturing process, uh, but it's also a raw material. Um, and never really thought much about it, uh, 
you know, we're really just as, as a raw material, it was just, you know, we had a truck that would show up and fill up our tank and we'd use it to carbonate our beers. Um, as the byproduct, we just uh, off gassed our fermenters through a, through a water bucket and the CO2 just escaped into the atmosphere. And that was pretty much the norm. So I never gave it much thought until it, it, it was really um, the pandemic and issues that arose during the pandemic that caused me to stop and pause and, and give a lot more thought to carbon dioxide. I think the first thing that really set it off was the fact that um, in Rhode Island, and I think throughout much of the Northeast, I don't know if any of the other uh, breweries that are listening right now experienced uh, carbon dioxide shortages. Um, didn't even really realize it until we were close to empty one day and our uh, truck driver showed up to deliver CO2 and typically he would fill up our, our doer. We have a 5,000 pound doer and typically they fill it from empty to 100%. And uh, you know, that lasts us in the summertime, that'll last us two weeks. In the wintertime when we're slower, that'll last us over a month. And uh, so anyhow, I came for a fill. Uh, and left and uh, went out and checked and we were 20% full. So I, I called, our, uh, called our distributor and asked what was going on and that's how I was you know, informed and found out there was a carbon dioxide shortage. So that was kind of started in about the September timeframe and uh, you know, really continued all the way until uh, I, I was able to get, uh, get my Earth Relax system up and running um, uh, in, in December, where we were just hand to mouth with uh, with carbon dioxide. So anyhow, as, as we started to deal with that issue, I was fortunate enough to stumble upon an article in on CNN um, just about this uh, new technology, um, that, uh, how craft breweries were collecting their carbon dioxide, and that you know very much piqued my interest because. To, to the best of my knowledge, the systems that were out of it, oh, were, that, that existed were essentially oversized for a craft brewing operation. So it just really wasn't uh, technologically viable. So, uh, you know, dug in, saw, uh, you know, a website for Earthly Labs. So I was able to reach out to them. And, um, you know, I guess the, the, the rest is, is history, so to speak. Um, so I'll, I'll be getting more into that uh, in a little bit. but. As, as we got, you know, further into the project and, you know, getting quotes from Earthly Labs and things and um, just really evaluating carbon dioxide, you know, starting to, to see that with the shortage of our prices were, were increasing, um, uh, you know, just the unit price as well as, you know, when the truck was coming to fill me up for 20% of my tank, you know, I was still paying the same uh, delivery surcharge every time. So that was just, you know, adding cost as well. So it became very clear to me very quickly that there were some strong economic drivers to really pursue this technology. Um, you know, the, the more I got into it, though, and thinking about it, uh, you know, that's when really understanding the, the, the environmental impact, you know, that, that, that we had um, by just off-gassing of our, our carbon dioxide and really started to get my hands around, you know, how much carbon dioxide we were using and how much I could potentially, you know, save from, um, you know, just releasing into the environment. So, you know, when I started a couple, you know, the economical issues with the environmental issues, it, it, those, you know, combined were a very, very strong driver to, to pursue this technology and make the capital investment that was required for it. So, um, you, you know, on top of that, you know, it's kind of cool. It's like, all right, well, there's, you know, in this ever increasing, uh, uh, you know, industry with the number of breweries out there, you know, we're all looking for ways to differentiate ourselves. Um, this was an opportunity, you know, to differentiate Graysale, you know, a little bit further from, from other breweries in the area to actually be, be harnessing our own carbon dioxide using our beers. And that was, you know, that, the, the, that was a pretty cool driver as well. So, um, really rolling all that together and supporting, you know, the community and state climate goals. Uh, you know, Rhode Island has a goal to reduce greenhouse gases by 45% over the next 15 years. Uh, really kind of turned it into a no brainer to, to go ahead and move forward and, you know, bring this technology into the brewery. Uh, so you can scroll to the next slide. 
Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, the next couple slides, just um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the system, I'm just gonna walk you through a little bit about, um, you know, how it actually works in the brewery. So the picture on the left-hand side, that's a couple of our 60 barrel fermenters. And in the lower left-hand corner, uh, you can see a stainless steel drum, and that is essentially hooked up to the uh, vent pipe coming off the fermenter. And essentially that's just the, the water trap. Uh, there's a dip pipe, uh, inside the lid of that stainless steel drum that goes down, um, you know, through through sanitizer, and then the carbon dioxide just vents off of that uh, up into a header that was installed by Earth Labs that feeds the carbon dioxide stream over to the carbon capture uh, equipment. So the picture on the right is just a little bit more of a close up of the actual foam trap, and uh, again, it's um it's a stainless steel drum. Earth Labs customizes the top. I uh, put some tri-clamp ferrules on the top, and you get a valve to, you know, um, essentially to, to vent the trap off. Uh, there's a connection in the center for a spray ball because we hot rinse between batches. Uh, there's a, a pressure relief valve on it. We try to maintain the system at, you know, two to three pounds of back pressure, so the, the relief valve will vent if the pressure gets above that. Uh, there's a pressure gauge on it, so you know what, what pressure the system's running at. And then, um, you know, you've got the tube connections coming off the fermenter, and then uh, that would be the one on the right-hand side, and then the one on the, uh, the inch and a half uh, tube is connects to the vent header that then again takes the CO2 over to the, uh, over to the carbon collection uh, machine. So the next slide. Uh, just the one on the left, that's just uh, look, looking at the rafters. So, you know, basically we've got this inch and a half um, braided nylon tubing just kind of snaked through the rafters of the breweries. And again, that's that's the header system. Uh, the center picture is just me uh, standing next to uh, CC. That's the uh, that's the name of the unit that, that Earthly Labs came up with. And that's, you know, carbon collection. Uh, it's, you can't tell from that picture, but it's, I don't know, about four by four by five by, let's say I'm six feet tall, so a little about six. So uh, just essentially a large, you know, gray box that uh, that sits in the brewery. Um, so you just gotta, you know, find some room for it. We are, uh, we're very space challenged in our, in our brewery. Um, we really used all the square footage that we had. So, um, you know, find a spot to fit. We uh, found one that, that, that worked. Um, the far right picture is just then this uh, piping and tubing coming out of the, the back of the carbon collection system. So the frost over line, that's the liquid CO2 coming out of the system. And uh, from there, it's traveling outside to the doer. Uh, down below that is, you know, regulator that helps, you know, basically you need that just to, to regulate the, uh, the overall pressure of the system. And that's something that uh, you really don't need to touch very, very often. Um, and then all that sits there, there's a secondary foam trap right before the gas enters, and that's just another level of protection that if any uh, foam or liquid were to get into the system, uh, as soon as uh, any liquid level is detected in that trap, it basically shuts everything down uh, so that way you don't get any liquid in, into the system because uh, that, that's something you, you don't want to do. And uh, again, they've done a great job designing the interlocks and protections to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, so the next slide, uh, just more systems. So um, the uh, CC unit is right inside the wall of the brewery and there's literally about three to four feet from the back of that system to the doer that you're looking at in the left-hand picture. So we core drilled um, a, a hole in the brick to get the, the hoses um, to go from the, to, to get the liquid CO2 uh, from the carbon collection system out to the doer. Um, then the center picture is just, again, that's the line in, so you can see it's frosted over there as well where the liquid CO2 is uh, entering the doer. And uh, then the next picture just starts to show, you know, some of the ways that we use it. That's just, that's our twin, twist rinser on our um, canning line. The canning line is uh, the biggest user of CO2 um, in our brewery. Uh, 
anybody out there has has counter pressures, um, uh, counter pressure rotary systems, you, you'll know that those systems use a lot of carbon dioxide. Um, so we use a lot for that, as well as for purging out our equipment and you know for carbonating our beers as well. Um, so next slide. So this was something that was, you know, I'd say an afterthought getting into this, you know, is I think is, is again, for brewery owners that are out there, that the marketing is kind of always the, the back end of what we do. We, we know it's something we need to do, um, not why we got into the business. You know, we got into the business to make beer. We love beer. Um, but the whole marketing component um, kind of kind of foreign at first. And, you know, this is something, again, I got into this for, uh, you know, economical reasons, you know, first and foremost. Uh, but then, again, the environmental reasons just you know, they kind of just hit you like, yeah, this is the right thing to do. And, but uh, again, a byproduct of that is the, the, the marketing component. Um, and, you know, again, you want to use this to help differentiate yourself. So you kind of get the story out there and it's been overwhelming um, how much, how much press and that we've gotten from the system. People really take a lot of, you know, interest in this, uh, you've got a handful of things. We've been in craft brewing business. I'm just going to read through them. Energy News Network, um, uh, Brewbound, our local, uh, you know, WPRI Channel 12 picked it up, and we had a newscaster uh, uh, come down and he interviewed me and did a did a great great piece on that. Uh, and then I've done this is my third or fourth webinar, I think, that, that, that I've done. Um, and it's just really been extraordinary how much interest is out there um, in this type of system. And I've been excited to tell the story because um, people need to know about this technology exists. And uh, especially brewers need to know about it because uh, you know it exists and it, and it works. And uh, certainly encourage everybody to, uh, to check it out if you haven't already. So we'll jump to the next slide. Um, so, you know, employee and consumer feedback. So we're, we're just now really getting into kind of our busier season now. Um, you know, we're, we're a coastal town, so we're very uh, tourist centric, I guess you could say. And with the pandemic starting to lift, lift we're, we're already gearing up kind of into our summer business. So. Uh, you know, we're, we're educating our consumers as, as they come in, you know, about this system that, that exists, that we're carbonating our own beers in house. And the, the feedback's, you know, extraordinary. We, we really do see that, you know, craft beer consumers are very environmentally conscious uh, and, uh, um, you know, really interested in the system and inter interested in what we're doing uh, with it. And it's just really been a win win situation. For us, where you know, again, where the economics are there, making you know all the sense in the world, and then we're making this positive impact, you know, on the environment as well. And you know, the, the, the carbonating your beer with your own CO2, uh, that, that's just that's pretty cool. I mean, and, and the quality of the CO2 is, um, you know. Certainly, you know, I'm, I'm biased. I'm going to say it surpasses it anything you're going to get commercially, but um, you know, it's been it's just just been fantastic. You know, I think as far as the beers beers concerned, the, the lacing's awesome. The, you know, flavor's been fantastic, and and uh, so again, win all around. So we'll jump to the next slide. Uh, so just uh, just going to go a little bit about the project itself, uh, because again, if anybody out there is interested, you know, bringing a project in the brewery of any scale is just another you know level of work and management, you know, working your operation around the project, and you know, how are you going to do that? So uh, you know, first and foremost, uh, I think projects. The, the the key to a project is having a strong project management. Um, and, you know, from equipment supplier to equipment supplier, you know, that varies a lot, you know, just speaking from, from first-hand experience. Uh, Earthly Labs uh, had, 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 has an excellent project management team and uh, really did an incredible job 
scoping the project, getting the equipment, you know, delivered. They're based in Texas. You know, we had to get everything um, to Rhode Island. You know, you need all the parts and pieces. So they did a great job, you know, tracking shipments, ensuring everything got here um, and all coincided with their uh, installation person to get here and set everything up. So we had a we had a week scheduled for it, and uh, we did it in early December. The took all of about three days really, and I set three days aside, you know, ready to work, you know, side by side with um, with their uh, their installation technician, and um, you know, he didn't he didn't need my help. <laughs> he uh, super self sufficient. Um, just gave him some general guidelines, and he really just worked in the shadows bringing the system online. Um, the the follow up support and guidance uh, has been outstanding. Uh, you know, it's you know we, we we've we've had a few bumps in the road with it, and um, unlike other equipment providers where you hit a bump and you know you've already paid your last invoice, you don't get return calls. Um, Earthly Labs has been really second to none in terms of, um, you know, providing ongoing guidance, technical support, uh, you know, answering texts, emails, phone calls, you know, within within minutes typically. So it's the, they've been absolutely fantastic with their, um, you know, follow up of the equipment. Um, in terms of the fit into our, you know, daily process, it it there's not much to it uh you, you know you have to hook the phone traps up so all right you know we have to roll uh, you know these 55 gallon drums through the brewery to hook it up you know as opposed to you know a five gallon uh you know home depot bucket or whatever anybody else uses right now um so there's a slight bit more labor to do that but um once you get into the routine it, again it just becomes part of the routine uh, the day after you ferment, you bring the foam trap online, it starts feeding the system. When all the parameters are met, the system kicks itself on. Whenever the parameters stop being met, the system kicks itself off. Um, and in the meantime, you're just collecting carbon dioxide into your doer. And then, you know, you just need to track your carbon dioxide, which you're able to do because it's on a scale. So it's easy to know how much, how much CO2 that you have and um, just track it know when you've kind of used up as much as you can and then um, you know we, we we do still use our commercial gas um, but we use significantly less commercial gas than we did i would say that since december we are probably at about 10 percent of our usage of uh, commercial gas than what, than what we were before and as we continue to learn the system and uh, learn our uh, how to better schedule from a carbon dioxide collection perspective. Uh, that number is going to continue to drop. Um, so I'll go to the next slide. And uh, so this is just kind of uh, our, our business goals. Um, so I'll just kind of go through these. So you know, reducing CO2 waste in the facility and uh, in the state of Rhode Island. Yes, we're we're absolutely doing it. We are. You know, collecting hundreds of pounds. Uh, some weeks have been a thousand plus pounds of carbon dioxide, uh, and again, reusing that in our process, which is amazing. So, and again, all that just really greatly reducing our need for commercial CO2. Um, we've, in, in addition to that, it's really. Um, you know, forced me to take a closer look at where we're using CO2, uh, our, our, our canning line in particular, and what can we do to, you know, reduce the, the CO2 usage there. So I think I think just since we started this, I've reduced the, our CO2 usage through our canning line by about, by about a third. Just, you know, it, it all came with preset, uh, you know, rotometers and things and you know, everything worked, you know, our DOs were great, so I never bothered, you know, really making any adjustments. And again, with the goal of trying to reduce commercial CO2 as much as possible, started making the adjustments, seeing no impacts on our, on our, you know, DOs and our cans. So we just kept going till, till we, um, you know, really got a nice sustainable level there. So it helped, helped reduce that. 
Um, we're on track to achieve, you know, payback goals, the return on investment. Um, you know, right now I've got it earmarked, at, you know, three to five years. Um, you know, I think we're going to be more on that three to four year scale um, as, as we go. You know, obviously still a, a new technology to me. So, uh, you know, I've got to get a handle on, on the, you know, periodic costs and things that are going to go along with that, 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 you know, play into an ROI. But, you know, again, six months into it, um, got a pretty good handle on it. And like I said, I think that three to four years is, is a good number. And then, uh, you know, really just driving gray sale brand awareness, you know, um, you know, through through this technology. And uh, again, just another thing to help differentiate us and, and help, you know, to promote our beers, um, you know, by using this awesome, this awesome technology. Um, so next slide. All right, so I think, uh, so now we're gonna go a little, into a little bit more detail of the system. So this is where I'm gonna hand it back to Amy. Um, and then, you know, I'll be around and certainly available to answer any uh, questions if we have any at the end. So Amy, you can take it away. Awesome. Well, thank you, Alan, again, for bringing our technology to life. Um, I always find that storytelling is the best way to get a sense of the value. And as I mentioned at the top of the call, you know, our vision for carbon capture would not be possible without the investment of climate leaders like Alan and, and his wife, Jennifer, and Graysale. So thank you, Alan, for um, implementing our technology. So this slide is really just designed to give you an overview of what the technology footprint looks like. Um, the primary um, product is CC, which is the carbon capture box that you saw at Graysale, which is in the middle of the slide. But we do have these auxiliary um, products that make carbon capture possible. Um, as Alan described, we have foam traps. Usually we start with two at each client site and they can always add more as needed. You can plumb in more than one fermentation tank to a foam trap. Um, then we have a secondary um, foam trap, which we call the smart foam trap, which includes a heat exchanger and automation to allow um, any liquid that has made its way to that point um, prior to the uh, compression process to drop out um, automatically. So your team is not having to monitor that, but if there's liquid, it dumps before the system. And then we have a CO2 tank with every solution. Again, the size of the tank and the number of tanks vary. And if a client owns their tanks, we certainly are excited to leverage your existing investments um, to make uh, the payback even faster. Um, and then uh, some of our clients, most of our clients also integrate a vaporizer, which allows for um, the right flows and pressures into your canning line or into your carbonation process. Um, again, if you own your vapor man, we would use what you already own. So um, they're pretty standard off the shelf um, solutions, um, but we do find that most of our clients opt for all of this. Um, and as Alan showcased, um, it fits inside a, a small footprint. Again, when most people are thinking carbon capture, they may be thinking a 40-foot con container um, or a really large system. And this is about the size of a double-door refrigerator. And clients put it between fermentation tanks, um, buttress it against a wall and a tank. Um, put some components on one side of a wall, the others on the other. So we've we've been able to maneuver in really um, tight environments. And we know that as um, a company that wants to capture their CO2, oftentimes we're retrofitting. So we're having to work within, you know, unique situation. Um, but that's the, you know, the solution itself. Um, going to the next slide, um, this is a feature of the software. So embedded in every solution is our software. So not only can your team at a glance see what's going on inside the um, CC unit at a glance, um, they can also see what's happening on their phone. So if you have a brewer or cellarman halfway across the facility, they can check on the system, make sure it's running. If there is an alert or an alarm, it will send it to the phone. Um, also, as the manager or potential um, brewery owner, 
you can pull up the dashboard from your office wherever you are and see what's happening on site. Um, again, we continue to add um, dashboards that look at um, economic value proposition, but currently it does track your CO2 capture in real time. And as the world gets smarter about CO2 um, tax credits, incentives, and rebates, you know, we have a data platform that allows our customers to take advantage of those innovations that um, we see will exist one day. Um, so we're, we see the carbon capture solution, again, a combination of hardware, software, um, and services. So the, the remote monitoring dashboard, as Alan described, also allows our team um, to dial into the cloud and see what's happening in real time on your side. So we can, you know, troubleshoot together, you know, assess uh, key performance indicators, temperatures, pressures, and then get to a resolution quickly. So it works um, bi-directionally. One of my favorite stories recently, I was on a webinar with our customer Bowie Beer, and they said their brewer, you know, checks his phone every morning to see how much CO2 he's captured overnight. So that's been our vision is really making carbon capture affordable, accessible to small businesses um, in America and of course someday around the world. So um, that's a bit about our solution. Next slide. So we are excited to announce a new partnership we have with a um, third party provider, a woman owned business in Texas uh, like us that has a national database of um, rebates, incentives, and other um, benefits at the federal, state, county, city, and utility level. Initially, it was designed for the real estate market and somebody building new buildings or retrofitting buildings, but it has um, been opened up to manufacturers like us. Um, and again, if there are EPA or other regional benefits or rebates, it would look for those for you in your area. Um, we um, offer this service to our clients as a way to find um, additional ways to offset their investment in the Earthly Labs equipment. But the upside is it actually looks at um, potential benefits outside of carbon capture from solar and renewable energy to recycling to wastewater. Um, so it gives you sort of an at-a-glance look um, of what's available to you to continue your sustainability journey. Um, in addition, there are experts connected to this report that offer free advice. So if you, we help you identify a grant and you want to apply for it, Earthly Labs gets no compensation for any of this, but you can take a free one-hour call with a person who could help you write the grant if you needed support. Um, and they would happily offer you a quote to enable that effort. Um, to give to go to the next slide to give you a quick at a glance look at what that report looks like. Um, again, here's a an example that um, we had pulled for a Texas brewery in the Dallas area, and you can see um, we flagged a number of energy efficiency um, program benefits. Um, water conservation with the city of Garland, as well as at the state level, we flagged some um, tax relief programs for pollution control um, equipment, as well as emission reduction incentive grants at the state level. So in total, when we analyze the potential value proposition, because it's a rebate on equipment to do exactly what we do, our clients um, have the potential to access over almost 50,000 in, you know, free incentives, rebates, and tax credits um, with the link to people that can help you take advantage of these. So, um, so this is just an option for, um, for any of you on the phone that want to participate. Um, we do charge for the report a nominal fee, and then we rebate that charge um, if you elect to move forward with Earthly Labs. Again, we make no money off this report process. It really is a service to those looking to um, improve their sustainability journey and also underwrite the cost of carbon capture equipment. So the next slide um, really highlights a few other stories of our customers. 
Again, Alan is a great spokesperson, so there's no need to really go further than um, this webinar. But if you do want to learn more about um, how other breweries have implemented the technology, we do have both videos and additional webinars on our website at earthlylabs.com. Um, to highlight the Denver beer case study because it is unique in that Denver beer is isolating some of the CO2 they capture and um, selling it to the clinic, which is a cannabis uh, grower in the Denver area. Um, we have also talked to, you know, tr vertical farming um, advocates. What we've seen in that program, and it was one that the Colorado um, Department of Public Health and the Environment asked us to participate in. Um, the state of Colorado had a vision to reduce emissions from two of their large small business sectors in cannabis and um, breweries. And as a result of that, um, we did our own greenhouse gas analysis on the, you know, invitation to make sure it made sense um, on the on that side of the equation and then implemented it. The program has been going now over a year. Um, what we learned is that the plants are actually healthier. So I think Alan hit on some of the beer benefits we hear on the quality side, but um, the the grower in, realized an increase in yield as well as um, increase in terpene strength and sort of potency of the plants. Um, in addition, much like um, Alan seeing on the marketing side, we had tremendous visibility with um, the support of the governor of Colorado who wanted to do a press conference on the innovation. Um, and both both companies have seen strong demand from, from the marketplace for, for their products as a result. Um, you can also learn about Bowie Beer, again, similar to Allen. Um, at the start of the pandemic, they were looking at the technology but accelerated their purchase um, because of the increase in, in prices they were seeing. Um, and this helped them to hedge that um, price increase. Um, and then Austin Beer Works here in Austin, Texas, where we are headquartered, was one of our early uh, pilot customers with our prototype unit. So they helped us both innovate and they continue to serve as a live lab. So we are coming up with new innovations all the time and um, they allow us to test it out in a real environment, perfect it before we um, offer it to the market in a commercial fashion. So you can learn about all their perspectives and their voice um, on our website anytime. And then the next slide. Um, so for those of you on the call today in the brewery space, um, the product line that we've been talking about that Graysale has is our model Oak. Um, we designed that for breweries in the 5,000 to 20,000 barrel range. Having said that, we do have uh, customers like our recent customer Santan Brewing that's about a 50,000 barrel brewery um, that has implemented the technology alongside um, nitrogen generation to get a, um, a big chunk of their needs. While it's not all of their needs, um, it's, it's a big percentage. Um, and like Alan, they're looking for other ways to reduce their, de their dependency on CO2. Um, we are actively um, testing our model Teak, which is designed for breweries below that 5,000 barrel threshold. And um, at the ABGV, one of the um, award-winning breweries that we ha have the fortune to work with, again, they have been our longtime advisor since inception. And so we're super excited um, to sort of push the boundaries of low flow carbon capture because we're capturing sort of below that one PSI limit um, to achieve that conversion. And then we have our large scale system in the model Elm and that product line is designed for breweries above the 20,000 barrel mark. So um, we're, we're excited to partner with leaders in the space to innovate model Elm and, and have that available um, in market in early 2022. On the next slide. So as I mentioned at the top of the call, um, we are excited to partner with leaders um, in um, the space that want to implement carbon capture at their facility. So um, we've been actively talking to wineries and distilleries this year as 
new markets that we would like to open. So if you are one such um, facility, we'd love to visit with you. Um, we spent a good bit of time last year in analyzing the CO2 gas composition for last year's wine harvest and also for distilleries this year um, and are excited to demonstrate ways not only to capture CO2 from wineries affordably, but also um, have innovations around both offtake, as we demonstrated with Denver Beer Co., and conversion. So we've identified some novel conversion opportunities um, for that. Um, again, in general, our vision is the same as the EPA's, which is to keep CO2 molecules out of the atmosphere and to make it affordable um, and market driven for people to say yes. So we're honored to be here today on the vision to reduce greenhouse gases and we'll turn it back over to um, the team to address Q&A. Great. Thank you so much, Alan and Amy. You certainly gave us a lot to think about um, and I'm sure that the audience has a lot of questions and uh, to do so, if, you're, if you wanna ask Alan and any questions that we have the uh, uh, the Q and A or the the question tab on the side box of the, uh, of the screen. So look down simply on the right hand side of your screen, where you can um, en enter your questions. So with that, I'd like to go and kick off the Q and A session of the webinar. We're going to be ending uh, right off the hour, but we have some time to hear from the attendees. And so. Emily, what do you have for us? Thanks, Rob. Yeah, so we have a lot of questions coming in, so we will try to get to as many as we can. Um, one of the questions was, is the PowerPoint available? And it will be emailed to you all after the webinar, so just wanted to make that known. Um, so our first question is for Amy and um, so what was the approximate cost and return on investment for the carbon capture system? And Alan as well. You both can take a stab at that question. Yeah, great question. So um, in general, um, for every client interested, we do a CO2 assessment and a payback analysis. The price of CO2 varies nationwide. We've seen as little as five cents a pound and as high as $2.20. And um, that does um, shape the uh, payback horizon for, for each brewery differently. So you can imagine the party paying over $2. It's a matter of months. Um, and those paying far less um, are probably at that five year mark. On average, our customers um, see a payback of two to three years. And if they um, can find an offtake partner to buy a percentage of their CO2, um, they can get that below two and in some cases below one. So the next question and probably the most popular question people wanted to know is, can you speak to the amount of energy that is consumed in the capture, filtration, and compression of the captured uh, CO2? And for Alan specifically, uh, was the increased electricity usage a consideration before installation? And for Amy, how has Earthly Labs designed the system to be energy efficient? So kind of a three-part question there. Yeah, so I'll start. We're still kind of in the stage of, of really trying to assess where we're at. It, it's tough because we have to look at things year to year. And with the pandemic last year, um, it really kind of throws our, a monkey wrench um, into what our what our production was because our production is not consistent in uh, 2021 versus what it is you know right now. So so we're, we're still still gauging that. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't uh, really take it into any consideration getting into it because, um, you know, we, we were having serious issues with running out of carbon dioxide and I didn't know how long it was going to continue. Uh, you know, a lot of uncertainty with the pandemic going on. And that, you know, that, that was my biggest driver was the supply chain and the need uh, to have carbon dioxide in order to, to run the brewery. So, um, you know, just 
real quick, I, I haven't seen, you know, like any major changes, you know, to the electric, um, you know, since, since we've installed it. Um, so, but, you know, a, 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 again, I need to follow up a little bit more. Um, Amy may be able to have some more information just based, she's got years and years of experience with her customers. So I'll, I'll let her uh, take, a, take a crack at that too. Yeah, it's a great question. So when we were designing the system, that of course was our top of mind design constraint. And so as we look at um, both the design phase as well as the testing phase, we were studying the amount of energy used per pound captured um, as a key KPI to you know, modify the design and or provide um, improvements on how we uh, does, you know, implement the solution. I'll give you a quick example. Um, the brewers are not uh, making CO2 mostly on Mondays. So most small craft brewers come in, start their brew houses on Monday, and so their fermentation cycle lags and the CO2 may not be available until Tuesday. And so we've designed the system that um, is looking for the gas when it's available. Otherwise, it's turned off. Um, and similar with other processes, you know, in the unit itself, as well as ways to recycle and reuse um, our own our own heat and our own cooling capacity, so that we are not um, dependent on outside sources for some of those items. Without giving away too much proprietary data, but um, energy efficiency is core to our solution design and. We certainly at the customer level can go into more detail about it. Um, in general, from our customers that have studied it, um, they've seen incremental cost of you know, 800 to on the top end, 1,000 to $1,500 of incremental cost a year. Um, so that's the guidance we've given back, but it varies by you know, kilowatt per hour, as you know, nationwide, as well as um, what type of energy source they are drawing from. So, um, we continually uh, look for ways to make our system more energy efficient. That is one of our top goals um, in parallel to increase our capture rate per hour. So last year we introduced um, tech, uh, tech improvements that allowed us to almost triple our capture rate per hour, which again for the same energy draw increases our overall capture potential as well as our you know energy efficiency per molecule. So. We are we are on the same wavelength as everyone on the call, and and it is top of mind for our team. And Amy, are there any ideas when the smaller system might be available and affordable for smaller brewers? I know you slightly touched on this, um, but that did come up again in the chat box. Yeah, so we like I said, we you can check out our Instagram. We've got some recent updates there. Um, at Earthly Labs. Um, so we are as eager as the market is to make it available. Um, our current target on the commercial side is Q4, but if anyone wants to start the process and just see um, you know, what the payback looks like, how much we can capture for them, we're happy to start that conversation now. And has this technology been used in high altitude cold climates and does it still perform properly? Yeah, so we have actually implemented it in high altitude environments and it does perform um, properly. The need in general is to have um, adequate pressure and flows. So our two different models um, are designed to address that. Um, so obviously a larger brewery at a higher altitude is, is currently the, the the easiest thing for us to solve for. So I wouldn't say that universally for a small brewery, but I would definitely say it for a brewery in that, you know, 20,000, 5,000 barrel range. Um, and this is a question for you, Alan. Um, what obstacles did you encounter along the way um, with this installation? I if the answer is done, yeah, we really didn't have any obstacles. It was like, like I said during my presentation. Um, you know, 
it, again, is a brewery that's done a lot of expansion since we opened. Um, this was really one of the smoothest, um, you know, pieces of equipment that, that we installed. Um, I, I think the, the biggest issue was just related to the transportation. The, the system was a little banged up when it arrived, but uh, when the installation technician, uh, you know, arrived on site, went through with a fine tooth comb, um, you know, Amy and her team was on board from the time we offloaded it, you know, with pictures and following up with the carrier. And, um, you know, so that was really the only issue, but, you know, we got over that in, in a hurry. And uh, like I said, just super smooth installation, um, seamless. And another question for you, Alan, um, based on the 10,000 beer barrels per year of production, how many pounds of carbon dioxide would you say you were able to collect um, per week or month? So you might not have the answers to that, but. Yeah, I, I can just know, because again, it's really been, what, since the beginning of April that we've ramped up to full capacity. And, um, it, it, and it's hard to tell because we're using we're, we're using it as we're uh, producing it. Um, but ballpark, I would say that right now we're generating 200, you know, probably six, I don't know, six to 800 pounds a week that we're collecting, you know, in, in that, that ballpark. It also depends on what beer we're brewing, you know, if it's a higher gravity beer that's going to generate more carbon dioxide than a lower gravity beer. So, um, but the higher gravity beers are what we produce most of. So I, I think that number 600, 800 pounds is, is uh, a, a good number. And the last question for Amy here, are the carbon dioxide capture opportunities at wineries and distilleries as significant at those at breweries? Yeah, so um, just in the, in, the, in the chemical composition um, the, the wineries and distilleries have higher ABV, and the amount of CO2 produced is directly proportional to um, the alcohol content. So as a general statement, they do um, produce more CO2 per, per barrel made. Um, and so from an environmental perspective, um, if we can help them capture it energy efficiently and also either convert it on site or um, use it in a novel way, then it makes sense. And so, like I mentioned, we're um, investing in those pilots this year and are excited to explore what that looks like. Great. I think um, we're going to end it there. I, uh, this has been a, a fascinating view into carbon tech, uh, capture technology. And so with that, I really want to thank our, our two guests, Alan Brinton from Graysale Brewing and Amy George from the Earthy Labs. Also a big thanks to our EPA and New Hampshire uh, DES Pollution Prevention Program team. Uh, it's been great pulling this all together. Um, finally, I just want to let you know our final in the series of three webinars for breweries is taking place on June 22nd, where we're going to be looking at how to cultivate a culture of sustainability at your facility. The three New England breweries include the North um, Throwback Brewery, who's from Northampton, New Hampshire, the Redemption Rock Brewery from Worcester, Ma Worcester, Massachusetts, and Allagash Brewing Company in Portland, Maine. They have great experience acting as B Corporation, sourcing local material, developing green teams, uh, shooting for zero waste. So we want everyone to join us for that. And with that, a big thank you for uh, everyone for joining us today. And once again, you'll be able to watch this webinar on the New Hampshire DES Pollution Prevention website. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day and cheers. Thank you. Thank you. There will be a post uh, survey sent out, post webinar survey. So please feel free to fill that out. Thank you, Kathy, for mentioning that. Yep. And I think, Kathy, we were going to do a drawing for an incentive survey, and you can let the brewer know who won. Um, Spyglass Brewing, if you're still online, we will send you an email. That's Spyglass Brewing. You uh, won that free green incentive package that Amy mentioned. Uh, the best in the show. And so, like, I, I couldn't help but...
that, you know, like it is my duty in the midst of all this is going on to do what I can to protect other people. It's like, it just, it, it, it was. Not sure who that was. <laughs> Thank Iron you so one. much. Thanks, thanks for joining us and thanks. Um, it's, it's been, thank you.